Hello everyone, and this is a video about some of the announcements that have been made for the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sequel that will be coming out in 2016. Uh, tentatively, I think it is titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Half Shell, which is a title I don't particularly care for, but whatever. After the first one, it uh, it did uh, very well financially. Um, it wasn't a great movie, but it surprised a lot of people in that it exceeded most everyone's expectations for it, especially a lot of the fans who were expecting it to be horrible since it's produced by Michael Bay and there's a big hullabaloo over comments made about an alien origin to the Turtles, uh, which nobody liked, and also uh, William Fitchner's announcing that he would be playing Shredder, and then of course the casting of Will Arnett and Megan Fox and Whoopi Goldberg. It just, it seemed like almost every announcement leading up to that last Ninja Turtles movie was poorly received and no fan of the Ninja Turtles was seriously looking forward to that movie. So when people saw it and there was actually uh, quite a few genuine fun Ninja Turtle moments in it, a lot of people were pleasantly surprised, me included, even though I myself waited forever to see it. And, uh, you know, overall I enjoyed it. Of course, the more I reflect on it and think about the flaws in the movie, it doesn't hold up as much. I don't know if it's a movie I would buy and rewatch, um, but it wasn't bad. And there were several redeeming qualities in it. So now we're we're going to be having a sequel, and uh, there's of course a lot of concern from uh, Ninja Turtle fans again. A lot of worry about Michael Bay, who's still producing it, just making it worse the next time and worse again the next time. Kind of like what happened with Transformers, whereas the first one was decent and the rest have all been pure garbage. But with that said, um, so we've had a lot of announcements. So the first thing was that uh, the, the the new director for the film is going to be Dave Green. And now this guy is pretty new in Hollywood. Uh, the only real real credit he has is with Earth to Echo, which I've not seen, but I've heard that it's a pretty decent movie for what it is. You know, it's this low budget, uh, found footage, Goonies type, E.T. type movie where kids find in this alien robot and are trying to help it out. That could be a good thing or maybe not for the next Ninja Turtles movies. I guess we'll have to see. The one thing that I'm kind of hopeful for is that uh, this Dave Green guy, he's, he's a pretty young guy. And so hopefully that means that he is a Ninja Turtles fan himself. You know, if you get like a real true Turtles fan on the project, then he's going to do his best to make it really great. And then since then, there's been a whole bunch of other announcements that are sounding pretty hopeful, um, especially for fans. And it's one of those things you have to take with a grain of salt because are they making all these decisions and putting all this fan service in there just to appease people, but in the end, it's not really going to be any good? Or is it something where David Green is really taking this seriously and putting together uh, the movie that he would want to see as a, as a fan? Which I'm not even sure if he is a fan. Hopefully he is. I kind of assume anybody, any you know, like 80% of all boys that were born in the 80s grew up with the Ninja Turtles and, and love the Ninja Turtles. So the odds are pretty good. As far as the writers go, we have the same writers that made the last one, which might be an okay thing. Uh, you know, I didn't like all the writing in the last one. I'm not sure if that might have been some of Michael Bay's notes that made it like that or um, how that happened. But there were some genuine funny moments and some and some good writing as well. And the, the team that wrote it, they actually also wrote uh, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, which I really enjoyed. I thought it was great and it, it was done by Brad Bird. And, and so that gives me a little bit more confidence in the writers that they can pull off something good, even though the first Ninja Turtles movie was just so-so. Then we had some other announcements. That, the one I didn't like let's get that one out of the way is that eric Sachs's character is returning and i hope it's just something really quick to tie up the end of his character maybe showing the repercussions from the first movie and how he ends up taking the fall and going to jail or something like that i don't have any need to see him anymore he's not a ninja turtles character so yeah i really was hoping that uh, eric Sachs would just be abandoned and they would just kind of go full throttle with the, the real ninja turtles villains in canon the, the good announcements that we've heard so far, I think it's pretty much been confirmed that they're going to put Rocksteady and Bebop in there, which is great. Ever since The Secret of the Ooze came out back in the 90s, everyone's been saying, what? Why isn't Rocksteady and Bebop in the movies? And it's interesting, I guess, back when they made those movies, I never knew this, but uh, the studios didn't have the rights to those characters because they only had the rights to what was done in the comic books. So anything that was completely original to the cartoon, any characters at least, they couldn't use in the movies, so they couldn't actually use Rocksteady and Bebop which is why they invented those other mutants for the Secret of the Use. But finally, uh, we'll be getting Rocksteady and Bebop on the big screen. I really hope they do them well. I'm kind of hoping that they, they don't do like the cartoon where it's a couple of thugs that the, that are mutated, uh, where they combine their DNA and the mutagen with animal DNA. Because that if you just make the mutated animals, if you just have a warthog and a rhino mutated into these guys, then you don't need to get into any backstory because they're just animals. <laughs> and also, it would it'd just be a, a, an easy way to explain their names. 
right? You know, because uh, Roxy and Bebop, you know, those could easily be the names of a couple of zoo animals or something like that. Instead of some weird explanation for why these guys call themselves Rocksteady and Bebop. So that's exciting to hear. Another announcement that was made is that they're getting a new actor for to play the Shredder. Uh, which is great that they're getting a, a recognizable actor for the role of the Shredder, which basically is, probably means that his role is going to be beefed up a little bit, which hopefully means Eric Sachs is getting pushed completely aside. The one thing that I'm curious about how they're going to do it uh, is that the, the actor that they got is, is fairly young compared to what we thought the age of Shredder was in the first one. Now, I might have to go back and watch it, but it, it seemed to me like they implied that the Shredder was even older than Eric Sachs and was kind of his mentor. Now, they're casting a guy that's obviously younger than Eric Sachs, so I don't know if that means this new Shredder guy is not Uruku Saki and he's going to be like the son of Shredder and he takes up the mantle, or if they just kind of go in with the idea that maybe Shredder was younger than we thought and he wasn't actually the guy who uh, raised Eric Sachs. Maybe him and Eric Sachs have more like a, a sibling or friends uh, type of relationship. One thing I think might be interesting is if they reveal that shredder is immortal or you know really really old like ancient old um i think it would be cool if he was the founder of the foot clan from way back in feudal japan and that he's lived all these years perhaps due to the mutagen that he discovered or even cooler is if we had a backstory where if you remember eric Sachs's little story in the first movie that he tells april about you know in ancient japan there was this warlord that poisoned the water and then this alchemist found the cure to the warlord's poison and was able to defeat this poison by curing all the people and saving the day. I think it would be kind of cool if the warlord was Urukusaki from way back in the day and that the alchemist was actually a, a is, was Krang. And this would probably be like a late reveal, like a twist later on in the story. But if we found out that Krang traveled either from space or from another dimension to Earth during this feudal ancient Japan time and was kind of stuck here because, you know, Earth's technology wasn't advanced enough that he could create a way to get back or to, to do his original plans and that he had to stay here on Earth and wait until a day that our technology would be useful enough to him to enact some great plan. But in the meantime, he did have his stuff he brought with him. He has himself a mechanical suit and maybe he makes it so that he kind of blends in Japan and uh, he strikes a deal with Shredder using his science is able to keep Shredder young all these years and together they form the Foot Clan and they concoct this plot back in the day where they poison the well and then Krang as the alchemist cures everybody to kind of win everybody over to his side and, and have uh, plans that down the line they're going to take over the earth or whatever but which I think would be kind of really cool if we were to tie that in and that would kind of uh, actually validate some of Eric Sachs's silly plot that he had in the first one where he wanted to poison everyone and then cure them to win them over and so that would also explain why Shredder is young and even though he might have mentored Eric Sachs who's older and then that would also explain where the ooze came from this mutagen that Krang brought with him or developed the other announcements we've had is that Casey Jones is, is joining played by Steve Amell uh, from Green Arrow which is it's pretty cool um again I'm not super excited about this because we're getting Rocksteady and Bebop and we're getting a more decent Shredder probably. We're also getting some other characters. So, I mean, I love Casey Jones from the first movie. I love him from the cartoon. It's cool that I'll be in it, but there's a couple of things that make me not super excited is that then they might decide to pursue some romance with April O'Neil or focus it again on the human characters. Um, the other thing is that when they made the Foot Clan into this mercenary group with all these machine guns and technology, and they almost had to have these monster turtles to go up against them that you know they're bulletproof huge giant shells and these larger than life guys that could probably leap you know from foot soldier to foot soldier or whatever you know and then you got this super huge robotic shredder guy you throw Casey Jones in there, who's this regular dude with a hockey stick and a mask, and it's kind of like, well, uh, good luck, Casey Jones. You know, like, I mean, is he gonna have to get some sort of robotic armor that Donatello makes him or something? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see how he's gonna fit into the fighting, into the action, unless it means that they're gonna get rid of the dumb Marine soldier, uh, foot soldiers, and actually get some ninjas in there. That'd be kind of cool. And then the other announcement is that we're getting uh, Baxter Stockman. I'm not sure what I think about. Tyler Perry as Baxter Stockman, but I'm open to it, and it's nice to actually get a real scientist from the original story instead of Eric Sachs. I don't know why they made him, you know, it's like, oh, he's going to be like a mix of Baxter Stockman and Shredder, but he's going to be a white businessman, you know? <laughs> like, why did they make, I don't know why they made that character, but so it's nice to get a real Ninja Turtle character, and he'll probably be the guy that makes Rocksteady and Bebop, I'm guessing. What else? Uh, well, the latest thing that they've seen is uh, there's a set photo that shows Judith Hogue. She's the actress who played the original April O'Neil from the 1990 movie. Um, and so she's going to make a, at least a cameo or an appearance in this. You see her next to Vern and April, and she got this, like, 
business suit on so i wonder if she's going to be kind of the new boss i wonder if she's going to be another reporter or, or the new boss maybe hopefully she'll take whoopi goldberg's place because whoopi goldberg has no business being a ninja turtle movie but maybe she'll be the new boss i, I always thought it'd be fun if she played april's mom or something like that but it's not the vibe i'm getting from the picture so maybe she'll be like the female version of charles pennington who was the boss in the first movie who was like a nice boss as opposed to the, to the mean boss the burn that's his name burn thompson so that's another exciting thing. I love that they're putting Judith Hogue in there. I think it'd be fun if Sam Rockwell showed up too. And what's his name? Elias Cota. Co what's his name? I forgot. If original Casey Jones. Uh, Corey Feldman shows up. That'd be fun. But again, grain of salt. Like all this stuff sounds, you know, fun and it's it's exciting. And it's kind of giving a little bit of hope to maybe they're taking this franchise in a cool direction that the fans are going to love. But again, it could just be a, a bunch of fan service. They're going to announce all these things. Oh, let's just throw a bunch of stuff that the fans will like in there uh, to just to keep them quiet and shut them up. And then they still end up, you know, messing with it all or making it stupid or uh, focusing on the humans instead of the turtles. Who knows?